Well, welcome to the Rules Committee. It's good Thank to see you. you. Good to um, see you again. I, well, one thing I do think I want to correct um, is that Chairman Thompson and Vice Chair Cheney never said that the purpose of this was to bring criminal referrals, uh, that the purpose of the investigation was for the purpose of the investigation is to get to the truth of the causes and the events constituting the attack on Congress and on the Capitol. So the purpose of this particular action is to coerce compliance by Steve Bannon, who is the only person out there who thinks that he's above the law. Now, uh, yeah, yeah by all means, you can yeah, respond I, to that. I would suggest using a phrase Mr. Bannon uses quite frequently, catch the signal, not the noise. Uh, the signal in the testimony from Chair Thompson and Ms. Cheney referenced criminal contempt and Mr. McCarthy's especially active uh, efforts to block the committee. So I think that the signal they are sending is that that's the direction they want to go. Catch the signal, not the noise. Okay. And you started off by saying that uh, we're more concerned, I think, about Steve Bannon's podcast than we are about the truth of January 6th. I didn't know Steve Bannon had a podcast. Uh, apparently. It was, it, well, did you listen to the statements of the. I didn't know that that's where they were drawn from. He referenced them in his opening. Well, I knew that Steve Bannon was repeatedly saying on January 5th that all hell is going to break loose tomorrow. We are closing in on the target. He was saying it's unlike anything that you're going to expect, and so it's on. Very similar uh, to other political rhetoric. We okay, but, but fair, fair enough, fair enough. But he, here's the point. Let's just speak for real, if we could, Mr. Gates. Only way I do it. You've been on, you've been on Steve Bannon's podcast three different times. I think um, way, way did, more than three. Uh, okay, at least three times that I could find just by Googling it here. So the only person mentioning Steve Bannon's podcast is you. No, that's you? not true. The chairman actually mentioned it in his opening. Okay, that, then, then I missed it. He was mentioning statements. He wasn't advertising the, the podcast or his slogan or whatever. But uh, here's the question I want to ask you. Let's, let's just start with basics. Do you accept that Joe Biden won the 2020 presidential election? I accept that Joe Biden is the president. Do you accept that he won the, the election by more than 7 million votes and defeated Donald Trump by 306 to 232 in the Electoral College, a margin that Donald Trump called a landslide when he beat Hillary Clinton by the same numbers? I think that our election was uniquely polluted by these indiscriminate mail-in ballots. I think that this was the first time in America's history where the mailbox beat the okay, ballot Do you box. think there's any evidence that there was electoral corruption or fraud that materially altered the outcome of the presidential election, and where is that evidence? I believe that had mail, mail ballots not been sent to people who had not requested them, that Donald Trump would be sitting behind the resolute desk. Okay, right but you don't think that there is, legally speaking, I know you're a lawyer because you went to the great law school, William Neary, um, you're, legally speaking, there was no election fraud or no election corruption. Do you, do you, well, let's put it this way. Do you agree that 61 different federal and state courts, including eight judges that Donald Trump appointed himself to the federal bench, have rejected every claim of electoral well, I, corruption I just, or fraud I, that have been yeah. advanced? Do you I, agree with that? I, I don't. And the reason is those claims are not evaluated because in many of the circumstances you reference, jurisdiction was the principal question. So I think it requires a review of the procedure. Do you have process. any case authority in the land of those 61 cases or any other cases where a court has determined that there was electoral corruption or electoral fraud that materially uh, affected the outcome no. of an election in any state in the no, union? No court. Do you have which, one? Which I believe is a real failure of the judiciary. I think our, the Article III courts failed our country by not exercising more jurisdiction over those questions. Now, there's a difference in whether or not fraud existed and whether or not there's an adequate remedy. And I think also a number of those cases were kicked on well, remedies. No court has said really that fraud existed, and so there's no remedy because there's no violation, right, Mr. Right, Gates. Right, but you can't. There's no violation. There's no fraud. They decided that there was okay. no fraud if they didn't take up the question and review the facts okay. on jurisdiction or the, remedy. You know what? That might work on Steve Bannon's podcast, but that's not going to work in the Rules Committee yeah, of the United like States House of Representatives. I'm sorry, Mr. Gates. Forgive me. I, I've got some serious questions to ask you. The chairman of the January 6th committee, Chairman Thompson, and John Katko, who was the emissary of Kevin McCarthy, negotiated an agreement for an independent outside commission with five Democrats, five Republicans, equal subpoena power, right down the middle. And yet Donald Trump decided he didn't like it because he doesn't want anybody investigating January the 6th. So he turned against it, and then the Republican leadership flipped over and turned against it. I think you voted against that commission. Why did you vote against that commission? 
for many of the reasons that I've discussed today, that the focus on January 6th, the so you don't want to know is unwarranted. You don't want to know think, anymore. Look, I think we have. Okay, a, let me ask you about that. We have a process in Article Three where the courts get to determine those issues. If the United right. States government brings charges, people can resolve those in the courts. You don't want to know. That's not okay with you guys because you want to politicize Gates, it. Because you I know you too well for this. You don't want to know the answer. You don't want you to know. Have an no, no. So let me, Mr. Gates, let me ask you. Let me ask you a serious question. The stenographer is trying to. Take people's words down, and she can't if everybody talks over each other. Okay. So Our apologies to, to the yeah, stenographer. Okay. We're going to do you. it civilly like two lawyers, okay? Mr. Gates, let me ask you, ask you this. Um, let's say that the exact same attack had taken place. Let's assume 145 of our officers were beaten in the face with baseball bats, steel pipes, Confederate battle flags, etc. Let's say they interrupted the counting of electoral college votes for the first time in American history for four or five hours. Let's say marauders and insurrectionists came into our building and chanted for hanging Vice President Mike Pence. But let's just change the hypothetical. This one element, Mr. Gates, let's say it wasn't the Proud Boys. Let's say it wasn't the Oath Keepers. Let's say it wasn't the Three Percenters. Let's say it wasn't the Aryan Nations. Let's say it was Al-Qaeda or ISIS. Would you really not want an investigation into what happened with that attack on America? If Al-Qaeda or ISIS attacked the US Capitol, I would think that the least capable institution to bring them to justice would be this January 6th committee. You would not want. I would far prefer the legal process to play out or the military process to play out. If the American people had to rely on the Congress itself as an institution to protect us from ISIS without law enforcement, without the military, yeah. they would be in deep, deep trouble. Okay, is that a new position for you and Mr. Jordan? Because I know you guys well, it's have a new been hypothetical. involved. Yeah, you've been involved in a lot of different investigations, both of you. For example, does Benghazi ring a bell? I was, I, I believe, a law student at the Great William and Mary Law School. All right. Well, let me, but, let me, but before I come to Mr. Jordan, let me ask you this. Um, do you think that people who are subpoenaed by a court or by the United States Congress who think in their head that they might have a privilege or someone else might have a privilege have the right just not to show up? I believe that people have the right to allow the legal process to okay, resolve whatever. But you know how that works, Mr. Gates. You're a lawyer. You know how that works. So. You, you show know up. How it works too. Wait a second, you know Mr. Gates. It. Wait, hold on. Let's let's try to educate the public here. Please. Because people need to know. If you're subpoenaed, you go. If you think you have a privilege, for example, let's say Steve Bannon says, you know what? I'm guilty as hell. I don't want to testify against myself. In America, you don't have to. The Fifth Amendment privilege against self-incrimination says, I plead the fifth. I might incriminate myself, but you know what? You got to go, and you got to answer each specific question. Some of them might implicate your Fifth Amendment rights, and some of them might not. Even if he thinks he's got, in some surreal parallel universe, a uh, presidential executive privilege, even though he didn't even work for the White House at that point, he'd been fired by Donald Trump in August of 2017. This is in January of 2021, in December of 2020. But even if he thought that, He's got to come before the committee, and he has to plead it. Do you not agree with that? No, I think that. No, the, honestly, did, well, do you not agree on, with no, that? No, no, Mr. Yeah. Raskin, I allowed you to speak, and I didn't interrupt you. I hope I'm giving the same opportunity. I, just give me the honest answer. I, I, the honest answer is that the McGahn litigation that you and I both follow closely as members of the Judiciary Committee actually is the path forward. McGahn didn't have to show up to assert that he was waiting for legal. The process. president yeah. asserted oh, no, no, executive no, no. privilege on his now behalf. Now you're the one giving challenges to the stenographer. So uh, yeah, no, 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 I'm, I'm telling you. Wait a second. I, I'm going to elaborate but, on your your answer. No, no, here. But I haven't even given my full answer yet. It's so, not how it works. The rules can be, Mr. Gates. Just, just to follow this then. Well, wait, the so president, do, I, do I get to respond to these? Mr. Things? Gates, I'm going to give you the chance to respond. Well, respond to like President Trump asserted executive privilege. President Trump asserted executive privilege for McGahn. President Biden has not asserted. I believe there is. Has I mean, not asserted yeah, but, executive yeah, but privilege. President Trump but, does, has initiated litigation. Look, the so reason you all waited on McGahn is because the Russia hoax wasn't going well for you. And the reason you're okay, not waiting right. now is because you have no other legislation blah, blah, or blah. other solutions okay. for the country. All right. That's Mr. Why Jordan, you, let me switch you to you. You had the McGahn playbook, but you've ditched it because you guys need January 6th so bad.